As always, I get what I want even if it takes a year or more. I can't believe we are here this early. After watching each streamer on Earth invalidate all of the new perks, I made some changes to the formula. I played on PC. This is a shocker, I know, and while we're talking about surprises, yes, I did inadvertently reveal that I could make a video in a handful of days if I put my mind to it. If you're curious as to how differently that felt, I'd mostly just liken it to using my left hand instead of my right. Sometimes I'd hit the sensitivity key and absolutely lose my mind while trying to undo it. The only problem was that I borrowed a friend's computer to play it, and all of the goddamn footage had activated windows. Activate Windows. To remedy that, I had another YouTuber slip me some footage as if it were back alley cocaine, and you should all be very nice to him for that. Back to the point though, Nemesis is the newest killer. That Nemesis, from the really cool series. The cool series that makes me love it a little less each time, but at least there's seven. But stop right there, snarky boyo, because this update is actually completely awesome. Nemesis is so good that I actually couldn't help but want to try him. I made myself play him, unlike, say, the Trickster that was marketed with a theme that didn't match his actual chapter, and released with an ability that feels like I'm attacking with plastic dinnerware. Like I said though, I love Nemesis. Generally, I actually like most of the killers I talk about, it's just that I use basic sarcastic.pose so fucking much that it really muddies the waters. Back on track though, what is Nemesis's power? It's kind of complicated to be honest. Well, he's like if you combined Trapper with Plague with Pyramid Head with Doctor with Trapper with Nurse with He's the Omni Killer. So many different things in his kit, you'd think he was a traveling repairman. To anchor myself to this description like some sort of swearing growth, though, let's start with the whip. Nemesis can pull out a tentacle from his arm that slams on the ground. If it hits a survivor, it will contaminate them and deal damage. How it deals this damage is based on the amounts of TLC you've been giving it. It doesn't go through walls, but it does go over them. Kind of iffy, but it comes out so quickly that it seems to be hitting people over pallets. The length of this whip is based on your mutation tier. There are three levels, a short slam that breaks nothing, a medium slam that breaks pallets, and a long slam that breaks the game. You can raise this mutation tier by killing zombies around the map, or hitting survivors with a whip and infecting them with a contamination. When I first heard the developers describe this in the dev stream, I began to panic because it looked like they were just gonna make a plague again, leading us into an infernal time loop where behavior just remakes all of their killers but worse. This contamination is, in theory, Nemesis's weakness as a killer, because landing your whip attack only inflicts contamination as an effect. To deal damage, you need to hit them once they're all already sick, guaranteeing that Nemesis has to hit you three times with his power unlike the usual one-two punch. Unless you literally do the one-two punch. Yeah, only three. Cry your eyes out, loser. There are five vaccines around the map which can do a really fast interaction that removes the contamination. It's cool for extending the chase a bit, but personally I think people should get on the whole finding counterplay thing. I have a bad bump in my spine that says that the developers will want to nerf this guy and maybe just put more vaccines around the map instead of taking away his really cool stuff. The community clearly loves him. I love him. Don't set it on fire right now. Hell, that barely works. 90% of the reason I say that is because of the zombies and the absurd amount of moments where they instantly make a win for you. Technically, a good game would remove the zombies, but I really like them. In every match, two zombies spawn and roam around the map. If they collide with a survivor, same principle as the whip. Contamination first, then damage, then death. They're bad from an asymmetrical game design standpoint because they operate independently of anyone that actually has a real brain. You can get a kill because someone just happens to not notice them staggering into a loop. I'll bet you real money on the table that rank 20s playing this game for the first time might lose an entire match to just zombie hits. While they're here though, let's dole out some hints on how to use them. You can tell if one of your zombies has found someone on the map when they change their posture in their arms and raise them up. Nemesis can see these zombies' auras in a map-wide radius, so like, yeah, enjoy that tip, I guess. As for chasing, he's kind of straightforward. It's the same mind game we've been doing for like, what, 10 killers now? You have a power that goes through the loop. Do they actually vault that window or they fake it? Do you call their bluff or not? Even if you suck with the whip, you can always go back to hunting people down with the good old Manny Pacquiao's you're walking around with. I can't even think of any advanced tactics that would be specific to him. Hell, do I even want to give them to you? I mean, Christ, I don't want to hurt Leon. Jill, okay, but Leon's games are always great. Now I have to accept that he's in what amounts to hell itself. Who cares what happens to David King? His family probably owns slaves. As for those remakes, the second game can elicit some scares at the beginning until Mr. X shows up and becomes a moving wall of unfair pace killer but the Resident Evil 3 make was so action-packed that it hits that bad gray zone of uninteresting combat held back by horror elements and horror elements held back by uninteresting combat. By the way, I know everyone is currently sniffing Village's toilet seat, but this isn't much better. Resident Evil 7 has that I'm not fucking going down there kind of horror and Village just doesn't. I appreciate its creativity, but so much has been scratched off that I don't feel any palpable atmosphere anymore. I digress though. 
If you're one of those people who wanted me to do any of his add-ons that weren't red, you can be quiet because I'm on a deadline. I like low-hanging fruit as much as the next guy, but if someone were to make me talk about the fucking Jill sandwich, I'd shove it down their throat. Considering that the devs also gave a speech on the power of friendship and how we should all be very nice to the new players in the game and how you should always wash your penis after sex, it's pretty easy to assume that this killer was meant for beginners. Nemesis' first perk is the first I can imagine some newbie, fresh with energy in their keyboards and racial slurs in their throat, begging for out the wazoo. Lethal Pursuer allows you to see every survivor for 7 seconds at the start of the match, essentially eliminating that starting phase where you walk around the map searching for people. By the way, since I am very sexy and on the ball today, everyone should totally dust off poor Jeff and run Distortion once this hits live servers, at least for a week, to really upset all of the friendless losers running this. We all know it's back to usual biz after that, but for the time being, it'll be funny at least. My main issue with this is that it does nothing after it's first triggered. You're using something for 7 seconds. I know there are perks that would kill to last that long. Hell, I'd kill to last that long, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna be happy using it. The next perk is Hysteria. This perk triggers when you hit a healthy survivor with a basic attack. This will cause everyone who's injured to become oblivious for 30 seconds, and that includes the person you just added to the club. The upside is that this will trigger a lot. The downside is this will trigger a lot. It's like blood echoes, but you can't hear the echo. Most of the time you do this, it'll probably be for nothing. You get the guy you were chasing, and I'm sure he's very insulted, but it wasn't helpful for Nemesis the perk. It's not gonna be helpful for Nemesis the killer. I'll probably put this on characters that stick to basic attacks. I'm leaning towards the hag and the plague. In fact, I'm probably also gonna do that with the last perk on our list, Eruption. Eruption marks the generators that you damage, then once you put a survivor in the dying state with your basic attack, all of those generators explode. I've seen some people saying that this is a good combo with Thrilling Tremors, and don't do that. Survivors that are working on generators that explode are inflicted with incapacitated, meaning they can't work on gens, and that progress is doomed to regress whether they like it or not. If you put on Thrilling Tremors, you're gonna block that progress from being lost. Time to go on to the red add-ons, and then call this miserable video a day. The Shattered Stars badge will tremendously increase the zombie's movement speed after a generator is finished, like there's rosemary, thyme, and olive oil in their gears. It's up in the air if the zombies will still be useful after rank 1 hits, but fuck it if it's making the rank 20s miserable, who cares? The other red add-on booby traps the vaccine to expose the survivors when they use it, but uh... I've seen this before, haven't I? Oh right! Remember when you gave this add-on to the twins and no one ever got any downs with it because you are directly incentivized to not do this near the killer? Perhaps if the survivors really would like to be dickheads, they can carry it with them and immunize while you're chasing them. Let's be charitable and say the developers totally saw this coming and it's not just them picking from the same five ideas they have. Finding perks to use on Nemesis is tough because I only have access to two perks on the PTB, Jack and Shit. He also kind of already has everything. I'd advise against some one-shot perks because you'll be using the whip for most things. In fact, one of the best conditions for you is to force the survivors to waste all of the vaccines, so you need to be contaminating them to get to that point. I can see myself running Trails of Torment or possibly something like Crowd Control since the windows tend to have walls near them and I can't slam through a wall. Also, I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but Hex Ruin? Any hexes? If a zombie randomly gets stuck on its hitbox, it's not even a hex anymore. That's just your perk, bro. Let it also be known that I'm totally okay with this new map. It's big, probably survivor sided, but the thing is that I don't care. The police station from Resident Evil 2 is a great video game level and I'll happily sacrifice my rank so that I could stare at the stuffed tiger in Chief Iron's office. Maybe they could have done a little better and based off the Resident Evil games that actually terrify me and not the ones that just sort of startle me. Look, okay, let's talk Resident Evil real quick. Looking at this chapter really confuses me as to where they want to take the series. You have the old Resident Evil with its characters that everyone remembers, and the new Resident Evil with a better story, better gameplay, but faceless idiots at the helm. In death as he was in life. Disgusting. It's been 10 years since we've gotten any update to Leon's story that wasn't a retelling. Hell, Jill, even worse. Obviously, marketing is important, and I can't ignore that behavior needs to pay those people to stay away from me somehow. Cool as Jack Baker was, he lacked an iconic feeling that Nemesis has. Resident Evil Village might have been a good contender, but horny, weak memes aside, I don't actually see a lot of these baddies being bigger than this year. Maybe they'll finally make a game where the stalker enemy actually remains throughout the whole- Oh. I think I answered my own question. As for behavior, what the hell's your plan for the future? What licenses are left to plunder that will ever be as cool as this? If you keep making tricksters, I can tell you it's not going to keep up too long. You guys have a problem I empathize with. How do you go for the top shelf and make something really cool and then say, all right, back to business? What killers could they introduce that top anything of value here? I can think of maybe two. I'm fine if they add Springtrap in, but I can't see them being anything more than a paragraph. Or maybe they'll redefine a chapter like they did with Ghostface and then never did it again. But they still need to aim for licenses to grow the game. When can we expect to be lukewarmly greeted by the fucking Blissfield Butcher? The point I'm making is, I see the top of the roller coaster. I know it's gonna be a thrill the entire way down, but once I'm back online, what then? 
I see more people getting on and you're still building the roller coaster. And we are almost certainly in international waters now. 